Good morning, everyone. I'm Cheryl Angeles, the President and CEO of the San Mateo Area Chamber of Commerce, and so pleased to have Mark with us today. Uh, I know I really uh, need help with Google Docs. Um, I used to be a uh, on a different program, Dropbox, and uh, this, you know, it's a little more challenging. But uh, I, thank you, Mark. He's got uh, 40 years plus of IT experience, so um, I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, starting on July 4th, we have a uh, video parade, 4th of July parade, and a, a silent auction for the Chamber of Commerce as a fundraising event. Uh, so we can continue on doing programs like this. So with that, uh, take it away, Mark. Okay, well, thank you, Cheryl. Thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, let me just uh, share my screen. So I put together a, a quick agenda, so we all know what we're gonna do today. I'll introduce myself, uh, which has already been done. Uh, I'm gonna show you how you can sign into different uh, Google accounts. Uh, I'll share a document, I'll show you how to share a document with someone. Uh, I'll also create a Google form, uh, send the links to fill it out to participants, and I'll show you how to, you can view the results. And then I'll open it up to questions. Now, the other thing I would say, if there's any particular thing that, about Google that anybody wants to know, uh, put it in the chat box and we'll try to get to it at the end. All right. On that note, I will downsize this. I will upsize this. I always recommend, uh, especially working with Google, you use Gmail or you should use Google Chrome as your uh, browser. And I'm gonna just do that now to make so everyone can see better. Um, uh, so I've already signed into a Google, uh, a Gmail account here. And some of you will probably recognize this. This is the Bang Gmail account, right? So I, you all might, some of you might not have even known that we had a Bang Gmail account, but we do. So off of that, you can build any Google application or do, use any Google, Google Forms, Google Sheets, Google Docs, all those things, Google Drive. Uh, one of the things I wanted to show you though, is I'm on here now. And one of the things I do every morning when I, when I you know, start my day, I actually have two other companies I'm doing work for. Um, all you do is click on your picture over here, in this case it was the B, and that brings you right into, I'm now into, this company's name is Indencio. I've, I've built a uh, WordPress website for them. Um, it automatically takes you into their um, Gmail account. And again, another thing you can do is I'll go to this one, is a company called Gaper that I actually do some consulting for. Click on that automatically goes into their Gmail account. Now, from this one, I'm gonna show you that from here, whenever you click on the nine dots, it takes you into the Google Apps. And one of the things I do on this is I'll go into their calendar. And actually, the only thing I had on my, my calendar for this group today was the bang meeting I had this morning and the Chamber Prezzo, what I, which I'm doing now. But from this thing here, from these this uh, icon, you literally can go to any of the Google applications. And there's a number of them. Today we're gonna work on, I'll show you, and we're gonna build one from scratch. We're gonna work on Google Forms and Google Sheets are the two we're gonna show today. Um, you can go to Google Drive at any time. If you see, I go to Google Drive. Um, these are different things I've done. These are some podcasts I've done that I've saved up to the Google Drive. Um, with, with Google Drive, you can also make folders. And as you can see, within those, I've made a bunch of folders. There's a, a podcast I did with Selene. Uh, but it, it's really just like your own hard drive, except for it's in the cloud. You automatically get this with a Gmail account. So I'm going to close, unless there's any, are there any questions on this? I have a question, Mark. Sure. Is there any concern about who owns the content when you put it in, in that drive? Um, so security is interesting with, with, with Google Drive in general. Um, you can set it up so that anybody with the same, this one is with Gaper, so anybody within Gaper can see it or you can, you can set it up so that only certain people can see it or you can make it public. Um, there's ways to do that all here, I mean, that's right. 
generally, like if, when it's on your desktop, you don't have to worry about that because unless people can hack into your computer, right? But generally what you do is you, you grant access to someone. And, and when you do that, and I was actually going to do that over here uh, on this account, right? I'm going to go to their Google Drive. There it is. And let's just say this here is a risk acceptance guideline for it's an accident insurance company. So if I wanted to, I could now share this with anybody, right? And all you literally do, and I always tell people when in doubt on a computer, you don't know what you can and can't do, right click on it, on the thing you wanna do something with. And nine times out of 10, a menu will come up that will tell you what you can and can't do. This is the menu for this particular, for a Google Sheet. Right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll share this, and I won't share it with Kevin since he already has access to it. But actually, since I know, I will share it. Jack, what is your email address? Is it Jack? Is it Jack Tang at? Actually, let's do. Mark, it's Jack Tang at MoonstarCorp.com. Moonstarwhat.com? Corp. Moonstar Corp. Okay. So what's going to happen now when I send this, Jack will literally get an email and he now has access to this. So um, I can tell you one of the things that I do that makes life a lot easier for me, because if you notice, I, I mean, I haven't actually shown you all of my Google accounts that I have. Uh, I'm just showing you three of them. Um, these, these, the last two I showed you, the two I use most of the time. Um, but when I get, let's just say I get something like this, right? This spreadsheet, um, I created it. So it's not that big a deal, but I, I don't have to normally do this, but notice everything in Google drive world has a URL, right? That's how you access it. Right? So what I always do is it's something I know I'm going to use on a regular basis. I go and bookmark it. Right. And I put it in a folder that I have created on my uh, Chrome called Google Docs. That way, I'm not going to do this one because because I I created always have access to it. But if you notice, when I go to my Google Docs folder, these are all the different Google and most of them are spreadsheet. The Google uh, objects that I have ac ac uh, access to, like for those of you in Bang, this is the Bang roster, right? Once I got it, this is the URL of it. Once it was shared with me, I go put it in this. And I now always have access to it. You don't have to go look through email and say, oh, where was that? And all that stuff. So that's just a little tip that I use. I, I have it called Google Docs. You could call, you know, you can uh, categorize it however you want. So, and actually, since Shaley's here, I'll show you too. There's the BRN2 uh, doc. And I'm going to get rid of the, and there's the member list for BRN2. So I always have access to that. And another little tip, if you ever want it, whenever I do a spreadsheet with email addresses, I always put a semicolon. That way, if I have to send something to a whole group, I literally just do a copy and paste, and then it will automatically put it in the two, and it'll automatically go to the whole group. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go back to this one, and I'm going to go to Google Forms. Mark, can I ask a question? You want me to wait till the end? No, go ahead. Um, so I have a situation where I had a recruiter who worked for me and she created a bunch of Google Docs that she shared with me. Mm -hmm. And then when she stopped working for me, she's like, I don't want to see these documents anymore, but I don't know how to give you ownership. So she's afraid to delete them because then I will lose them too. Do you know how to do that? Was, was she part of your domain? Was it part of SynergyHomeCare.com? Um, no. Okay, so then you're gonna, she's really gonna have to do a transfer of them to you. So we, that's a little bit more uh, complicated. You and I can take that offline. Or you can just send me a link and I'll look it up. I've just never known how to do it. Okay, so you want transfer ownership of dots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, and then Mark had told me before, if they're in your domain and you just deleted that ID, within 30 days, all those files go away if you don't <laughs> transfer yeah. them. Yikes, yeah. okay. So don't, <laughs> It's not like um, something on your desktop where you can go to your uh, recycle bin forever until you clean it out. The, well, the, Google, yeah, you know, and Google cleans yeah, it out. Yeah. So 
uh, and, I'll, and you know, there's other people that work with me who, ha who work with my other company where, where the email address is not a Gmail address. My synergyhomecare.com is. The other okay. one isn't. So everybody's using their own Gmail accounts. You know, uh, so we're, this could be an issue with those people as well. Yeah, so we, yeah. So I, I'll, I'll send you a link, but you and I can still talk about it offline. Thank so, you. Um, and, and one of the things I want to show again is these are all the different applications you get when you have a Gmail account, right? And they have... You know they do have integrations to these also right and i'm, I'm not going to go into all of that today there's really a, a lot of things you can do i have an asana account that's why you see it and i have a mailchimp account um but um and 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 what, one of the things i tell people is that um let me see uh there's a chat okay oh that was it okay um really the way i, I look at google is it uh, Google Drive, it's really Microsoft Office, but in the cloud. That's really the best way to describe it. The only real program that it doesn't have that Microsoft Office does have is a database. Microsoft Office has uh, access as its database. Google, Google uh, Drive really doesn't have a database application. They kind of use uh, Google Sheets as their database. And there's pros and cons to that. Um, being a database uh, administrator, I, I think it's a con, but some people think it's a pro. So. Uh, what I'm going to do now is go here and we're going to create a Google form. And right now I'm just going to do a blank form. If I go too fast, let me know because I kind of do this uh, in my sleep sometimes. Um, and what we're going to do is um, I decided, you know, a different company. What I'm going to do is, is set it up as a, uh, a company that uh, offers IT services, right? So you'll see that that's what the questions will be geared for, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is when you, when you first build one, you give it a name and I'm just going to call it the IT services form. And I'm going to go here um, and I'm not going to collect email address I'm gonna, and I'm not going to restrict it to people in this company, which is Indensio, whose, whose account I'm using right now, right? And I'm going to save that. So in really creating a Google form is really, really uh, easy. It automatically builds the first question for you. And the first question, first thing we're going to ask people to fill in is their first name, right? And that's it. The, the type of um, field this is, it's a short answer. As you can see, there's multiple types of fields. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm only going to use a few of them because I wanted to keep this uh, pretty brief. Uh, but as you can see, there are a lot of different field types you can use. So next up, I'm gonna do last name, which is also a short answer, right? I'm going to ask for phone number. The thing I'm gonna do with notice with phone number, and I should spell it right. I'm going to um, make it, notice it automatically notices that it's a number that you're asking for. So someone couldn't put ABC in there, right? It automatically puts a validation in there. You can turn that on or off. I'm just gonna leave it on for now. Um, I'm going to ask for the business name. That's also a short answer. The city. Short answer. Um, this one, the next one will be number of employees. Since this is an IT services company with computer. This also uh, notice it because I put the word number in the title it automatically is going to create a number, right? Uh, the next type of field I'm going to show you is systems supported. And for this, I'm going to notice it, it's noted, it changed it to a multiple choice. And I'm going to keep this very simple. Mac, Windows, uh, I'm going to say Chromebook, and other and get rid of that, right? And then finally, I'm just gonna do an, a thing for comments. Again, I'll try to spell it right. And this, notice it automatically creates that as a paragraph type um, field. And lastly, but not least, is I'm gonna add a video field. And the reason for that is you can do a video that you can have people watch before they fill out the form. And, and 
it's got to be a video from YouTube, just so you know. And I'm going to do a search, and I just happen to have a friend who has his own IT services company, so we'll use his. And then. And actually, you want them to do this before they to take the form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, you see these six dots here? I'm just going to grab these and move it all the way up to the top. And there you go. So right now, this form is built, right? You can go here, if you look at this, and you can preview it so you can get a look at what it's going to look like. This is what people, how people are going to see it. And I'm going to go back to edit. That's down here, right? Um, I didn't add, um, one of the things you can do is you can add a header, um, and choose an image, and I'm just going to do a real basic one. I'll use a web, insert that, give it a little pizzazz, right? And so the only thing left to do now is to send it. So what I'm going to do is you click the send button, and I'm going to send it via email. So um, there's Saley. Come on. I don't know why she's not coming up. Probably because it's, she's, I haven't sent her anything from this account. Um, Arash is on. You can send it to him. <laughs> yeah. There he is. He's on here. Yeah. Um, Pauline. Pauline, you're at, you're at the San Mateo Chamber one, right? Yeah. It's smchamber.com, is it? It's actually Sam Mateo spelled out chamber.org. Okay. Let's do let's see if I have Maria on here. Oh, dot org. Dot org? Yeah. Oh, okay. And for now we'll just do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna include if you include the form in the email, it's gonna give it in an email. What I'm gonna do is send it and we'll just do it now. We'll do this real quick. So those three people should have just gotten the form. So uh, I'm going to ask the three of you if you could fill it out. And this will take just a minute. And don't watch the video, it'll take too long. And as they fill it out, the responses, you'll see the responses here. And did, you get, did all of you get it? I received it. Okay. Yep, got it. All right. Got it. All right. The other thing I want to show you um, that you can also do, you see this here, this link? You can click on this, and I always click on the short URL. If you want to just send this URL to someone, you can in an email. You can just do a copy and paste of this. The other thing you can do is copy and paste this URL and, and include it in a um, web page. So if you want people to go to this form from your website, this is how you do it. You would add this to the HTML of your website. I chose to do send it via email. So as you can see now, we have three responses that thank you for filling them out. And what I do is you go here and it will show you Saline, Pauline, and Araj have all responded. With their first name, you can see it shows you their data as, that they put in. Now, this is a little bit hard to work with, but what you do, if you go to this link here, this is the spreadsheet, it's going to move all of this data to a Google Sheet and put you in editor. Right? So, anytime anybody now fills in this form, it's automatic, you're going to automatically get an entry in here. And from here, so you can do, because it's a Google Sheet, you can do a, so total of 11 lab or systems that people are requesting service for, right? I don't do that because generally, because what's going to happen is just going to keep filling in, right? But now this is a quick and dirty way to send out a form and get answered and have access to that data. And from here, um, as an example, if you're more familiar with working with things in Excel, you can do a download and download it to Excel. You can download it to PDF. You can create a web page. There's all kinds of things you can do with this um, Google uh, Sheet. 
You could also share this with someone. Right, right now I'm the only person that has access to it. But again, I could, you know, uh, well, Sally's not coming up. Uh, actually, I'll send this to Kevin. And I won't, and you could leave a message, right? I'm not going to send this to Kevin because he's going to have no idea what I'm talking about. But I could actually share this with anybody else that I choose to. Just like we did before. So, that was the, the part of what I wanted to show you today. Um, what I would like to do now is, is open it up to any questions, if there's anything else you want to see about Google. I already have the one question from the safety. We were, um, so I'm going to open it up to the floor. There's, there's nothing in the here. chat window, but you can unmute and ask your question. Yeah. So Mark. Yes. Um, when you were showing us uh, the responses were coming in, I was taking notes and I didn't see where you see that they're coming in. All right, let me go, I'll share my screen again. Thank you. When you're on the, when you're on the, so I went from here, which was the, the creation of the form to the viewing of the responses, right? And notice it says three. Okay. This here is the, icon for Google Sheets. So I literally just clicked on that and I've already got it open once, but now I've got it open and it takes you right to it. Now, just so you see it, now that it's created, if I go to Google Drive and go to my Sheets, it's called Untitled Forms, I didn't give it a form, a, okay. a name, but it also will show up here on your Google Drive. Okay. And you can go into it through there also. So Sheets is their version of Excel. Yes. Okay. And I have too many copies of it open, but that's okay. So these were the actual responses that the three people gave us. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Mark, I have a question. Yes. In regards to the form and potentially using it uh, on a website, um, so is there a way to set it up so that every time someone fills out a form and submits the information, it sends that to a designated email address? And if so, is there um, a benefit of using the Google Sheet or Google Form versus a form plugin that's available for, for WordPress, for example? Um, the advantage of this is that, it, to me, this is easier to build, right? And, and because right. you can create the link, there is an, an option and I have to look it up. I forget where it was. Debit add-ons preferences. No, it wasn't there. I assumed it was here. There, there is a way um, to have it send you an email every time somebody fills it out. And maybe it's here. No. But yes, there is a way that as soon as someone fills it out, you can be notified via email. I'll have to. Oh, look I'd that. like to know about that one too. Yeah. Let's see if it's, on, it's not under presentation. Uh, I'd have to look that up. Okay. I personally don't use it because I, you know, you, then you get inundated with emails, but that does exist. And then mm -hmm. we could use the Google form. You know, oftentimes we're trying to poll people and say, what's a good time for a meeting? So can we use a Google form for that? Because I know using Doodle, if you don't have an account, they start charging you for it. Sure, so let's do this. So let's go into, I'm back in edit on this. So I'm gonna add a field. And it should be down here. Uh, why is it not working? It's probably good, I'll go to this one. This is the edit. So I'm gonna add a field. And that's what's called well, I'm going to change this field. It'll be easier. It's called a checkbox grid. Okay. Okay. And so to show you really basically, I'm just going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll just say morning. So now that's saved, right? 
So if I go and view this now, you'll see that I can click any of those options. Okay. Right. So it's just a different field type. It seems so simple. It is. And, and, and the only thing I, because I've been doing it for a while. Oh, I did, did create those blank ones. I just didn't see them at the top. Um, I've been doing it for a while. So I, I, I do do it naturally and I go through it quickly. And we only had, you know, we have a limited amount of time. I really suggest that, you know, think I wrote all the questions out ahead of time that I was going to put on this. Um, and literally you saw, I just kept hitting the plus, right? And I suggest go ahead and do it, right? And I'm going to cancel this now. Um, unless anybody wants, still has questions that they want to leave it up. Actually, Mark, can I ask another question? Um, sure. In regards to the integration of the Google form onto a website, um, instead of having a link um, and then when someone clicks through and leads you to the form itself, is there a way to have the actual form appear on the web, web page? Yeah, and that's done through, there's a couple ways to do that. That's done through WordPress. Um, if you're going to do that, though, I would recommend, I mean, um, I would recommend using one of the form, and, and this is tricky, one of the form um, plugins with WordPress. Um, the downside of that is you have to know how to use, because that will put it into what's called a MySQL database, those responses. Right. So you have to know how to access a MySQL database. So we wouldn't be able to use the, have the, the form, the Google form look and feel appear on the web page itself. Right. Is that correct? Yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. That's where it gets a little, and, and, and that's, you know, cause that's some of the stuff I think they're working on. I mean, there are some really good, uh, there's a, there's a package called formidable forms that, I mean, it is, a, it's a plugin for WordPress and it, it is pretty extensive. Um, the other thing, if you just want to show the results, you can also do that through Google Data Studio. You can create a, what's called a Google Data Studio form, and it would show, it would actually take the results of this, and that you would be able to show on a web page through embedding it. So, and I can look that up, Jack, to maybe see if they can do that now. Because, I mean, I tried to do, I looked that up probably about a year ago, and they couldn't do it, but maybe they've built something since. Sounds good. We can take that offline. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Mark. It is 1030. Any last minute questions? Well, I have a last minute comment, if that's okay. Sure, sure um, Regina. I have to admit, I've learned in 30 minutes time a new uh, process or a new skill that I will definitely experiment with and use. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and, and one thing I'm going to show you, when I said um, I recommended playing with it, literally just go to sheets and, and do this stuff. And this is it, right? And, I will. And literally, will. well, the thing I say, I say play with it. And then when you're done, when you're, when you're done playing, when you're, you feel comfortable, just go delete it. <laughs> and just right click on it <laughs> and delete it. <laughs> There's remo I'm not going to do that because this one actually has code associated with it. I'm yeah. Like, right. And actually, if you, if you, if you all want to see it, I can just show this real quick. Come on up. The other thing you can do with any of these, once you have a Google Sheet, um, and I've done this on this sheet here, is you can go to Tools and Script Editor. And if you know anybody that knows um, JavaScript, you can write code that, that automates things on, on the spreadsheet. Um, this is actual uh, functional JavaScript that anybody, you know, most, and anybody with a, a degree in computer science will know JavaScript. I can tell you that. It depends how old you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody with a degree in computer science in the last 10 years will know JavaScript. I was going to say. Cobol, OK? You missed it by one year, Pauline. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I learned basic back in seventh grade. <laughs> what about Cobol wow. and Fortran, all that stuff, you know? Yeah. I, yeah. I programmed in all of those languages. Yeah, we did. We have. So here we go. Oh, so yeah. if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, but I really just encourage you go out and try it. And if you I'll it, do that, I do it all the time, and then I just delete it. 
<laughs> if I don't like it. <laughs> I'll be yeah. sure to do that. Okay. Great. Thank you so much, Mark. And then um, reach out tomorrow.